We begin this hour in the Middle East. Israel's military has said it's begun ordering Palestinian civilians to leave parts of eastern Rafah ahead of a planned operation in the southern Gaza city. In this video by the Israeli Defense Forces, they're urging those in eastern Rafah, close to the border with Israel, to move to what they call a hum humanitarian zone in the Al Mawasi and Khan Yunus areas. The IDF have said this is a limited operation and should affect about 100,000 people. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continues to insist that a military operation in Rafah is necessary to seek out remaining Hamas fighters, despite widespread humanitarian concern for those sheltering there. Western and Arab leaders have repeatedly warned against such a wide ground operation because of the prospect of high numbers of civilian casualties. Meanwhile, officials from Israel and its closest ally, the US, have been holding meetings to discuss alternative, more focused plans. It's not yet clear if the new evacuation orders are part of those. Well, let's speak to James Elder, who's a spokesperson for the United Nations Children's Fund, also known as UNICEF. Thanks very much indeed for, for being with us. So tell us what you think the impact will be of this evacuation. Lauren, absolutely devastating. You have families in Rafa, their coping capacity has been smashed. This is six months of enduring this war, moving many times, probably having lost a home already. They are children are malnourished. They've already been living in conditions with, you know, one one shower for three and a half thousand people. They're being told to move, quote unquote, to a humanitarian zone. That's a unilaterally declared humanitarian zone. That's not a humanitarian zone where humanitarians have been able to provide the services they need to. So I've been talking to colleagues and friends in Rafa this morning and they're, they're terrified. I was speaking, Lauren, to a young woman. She's like, I know this has been coming. I just don't know what to pack. They'll go to an area in the middle zone, Lauren, called Deribala, where there is literally raw sewerage in the streets, or maybe to Al Mawasi, which is a beach. Same story applies. Nowhere is safe, but as unbearable as this is, it's happening and, and it's going to be horrific. And is it your understanding that uh, there are only specific areas that people have been allowed to move to, or can they, can they choose? No, there are specific areas without a doubt. Partly they will have to choose based on those people who have the means to leave. A lot of people have injured children with them. Hospitals, as I've seen, hospitals cannot cope with the number of injuries. There's a lot of children who have had amputations who are back living in tents. Those families will find it hard to move. But geographically, logistically, no, you still can't. A lot of families will not be able to move to the north if they'd hope to. Khan Yunus is impossible. That's another city bordering Rafa. That is rubble, not a little bit. It, but street after street of rubble. So they'll be pushed into this area called Mawasi Lauren, which is a beach area. It's sand. It has next to no sanitation or hygiene. It's getting hot right now in Gaza. It's raining today, but it's getting hot. So they'll be in tents side by side, five or six times the population density of New York City, but all on the ground, not a high rise to be seen, with no hospital care. Mm. The last remaining hospital of size is in Rafa, European hospital, so named because it was donated donated by the people of Europe. Uh, it's got 20,000 people hiding there and thousands more uh, in care. They will have to move somewhere without the medical care that they need. Tell us, you, you said that um, uh, the Israeli army had set up these areas without uh, assistance from the humanitarian community. What can you now do in terms of providing help if people are moving? Is, is there anything you can do? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. The whole aid operation has been so fragile because of denials and restrictions and insecurity and bombardments. Let's not forget our, our colleagues from the World Central Kitchen who were killed a week later, a UNICEF vehicle come, came under fire. Now, of course, that crossing in Rafa that is the lifeline of aid. If we are going to get close to meeting the, the needs of people, that crossing will now be closed for I don't know for how long. So, no, we have to be clear. You can't unilaterally declare a safe zone, firstly, because the other side won't be considering it as that, and secondly, because the United Nations needs time to actually try and support a million or two people. I said this in November. UNICEF and the UN has said this, Lauren, from the very start in November and December. This safe zone narrative is very dangerous because a safe zone legally must also provide water, food, sanitation and protection. These zones don't have that for people. And quite frequently, as the people in Rafa will tell you, safe zones also get bombed. James Elder from UNICEF, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us.